and we are back for another upgrade on the Asus GL55 3VE. Now this time we're going to be upgrading the memory so the first thing that you'll need is a 8GB USB. It must be at least 8GB otherwise you won't be able to fit Windows installation. You'll also need a crosshead screwdriver. This is so we can open up the case. The upgrade that I'm going to be doing is the NVMe M.2 by Samsung and this is a really nice SSD and I will also be putting in a 2TB SSD as my storage. Now before we can actually upgrade the laptop we need to first of all go ahead and download Windows 10 setup. So you just pretty much want to type in Google, type in Windows 10 download and when you get to the website it will be the creation tool. You don't want to upgrade it, you want the creation tool so you can set up the installation file. Have it downloaded, put it on your computer and then insert your USB. Once you've done that you can then go ahead and start formatting your USB. So make sure you don't have any important files or anything on that USB. And once you're ready, you can go ahead and start formatting it. It will ask you, would you like to do it? And you just want to press OK. And it will do a wipe on the USB. Now that you've got the setup file, you want to run it as normal. And then once the window pops up, you want to go ahead and read through the terms and conditions. And if you're happy with everything, then go ahead and press accept. On the next screen, you want to make sure that you select the second option to use the USB, the one that will say the other options. Go ahead and choose the language, choose which edition, and then of course want to put it to 64. If your system is 32 bit, then use 32. Just make sure you double check it before you start this. On the next screen, once again, make sure it is selecting the USB. Select your USB once it pops up. And then Windows will start to create the setup file and the installation. This can take up to a good hour. So if I was you, I would get comfortable and just put your feet up or watch a film or just put YouTube on. Now the next step is optional, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I would recommend downloading all your drivers before the installation. It just makes it easier and this is if you have a additional external hard drive laying around. If you don't, then don't worry about it, you can do it afterwards. But if you go on the official website of Asus and then search in the model of your laptop, you can find all your drivers right there. And you can also download the BIOS update. Right, so let's upgrade the laptop. Now, before we start unscrewing the screws, just make sure you have a plastic bag or anything that you can put your screws in because we don't want to lose any of them. Now you will have to unscrew 11 screws which are on the bottom of the laptop and you will have an additional one in the middle which is hidden. So as you can see these are all the screws. The one in the middle is hidden so you pretty much want to get yourself a flathead screwdriver or anything that you can get into the side of it and then you just want to peel it off. It's a little bit tricky to get into it but once you've got it you can peel it off and then you just want to unscrew the middle screw. Now that we've got all these screws off, you pretty much want to get into the side of the laptop. So you can either use a flathead screwdriver or a credit card or anything you have that is flat. You just want to get into the side of the laptop. You will start to hear the sounds once it starts to open up. And then finally, once you've made it nice and loose, you can pretty much put it down and open it up. If you've got a spare compressed air can, you can dust off some of the dust that is built up in the laptop.
You want to touch any type of metal just to discharge you from any static that you have. We're going to unplug the battery, so if you unclip it until it makes a clicking sound. You will also have two clips on each side, which will hold it down. So if you get both of your fingers to unclip those two. You want to hold down the power button for at least 10 to 15 seconds to drain any remaining power in the laptop. Now finding the SSD is really simple, it is this little thing right here. And once you found it, you want to unscrew the screw which is pinning it down. Once again, be careful with the screw because it is extremely tiny, so you can lose it. Once you've removed the screw, you just want to gently grab the sides and then just pull it out until you hear it click out. Keep in mind that it will be at a 40 degree angle. Now that we've removed the old SSD, you want to get your new NVMe. And then you want to grab it on the sides or at the top. And when you put it in, you want to put it in at a 40 degree angle and slowly push it until you hear a clicking sound. Then you just want to lower it down and let it rest on the screw holder. You want to get your little screw and then just screw it in. This is where it gets a little bit more fidgety because it is really tiny so you might drop it a few times. Just make sure it's securely on, so double check. Now to find the hard drive, it is really simple to see, it's pretty big, so it's literally the next door neighbor to the SSD. And this one is held on with four screws and the brackets which are holding it down. So once again, just use the plastic bag, put the screws in so you don't lose them, and then undo the brackets. Now that the screws are off, you just want to pull it out. And this is the hard drive. You will need to unscrew the screws, which are the brackets. You will have four. Best thing to do is also to remember how the brackets were, so try to remember which one's left and which one's right. Get yourself the new SSD and you want to put it upside down and then put on the brackets. At first I thought it was the logo on top but it is actually the other way around so... And like I mentioned before, if you remember which brackets which, you can easily put them back on. You also want to screw them so it's nice and secure. Double check all of them, make sure they are securely on. Lower it down and then slowly push it into the slot. Get the screws, screw it down. Now that we've installed everything, you want to reconnect the battery and then make sure you clip it down so it is in the slot. Reconnect the cable and then push it in until you hear it click and make sure that it is on properly. I normally do a little check right near the end where I push it a little bit more. Put the case back on. And you want to make sure every single side clicks down as normal. Put the screws back on. Now that everything is installed, you want to get yourself the USB with Windows 10 on. 
insert it into the laptop. Before we can boot it up as normal, you want to press the power on button and repeatedly tap the F2 key. It will either be F2, F12 or escape. This is so we can get into the BIOS. Once you're in the BIOS, there's a few things we need to check. So the first thing is we need to make sure that the NVMe and SSD is running. It will display it on the screen and it will tell you if it has picked it up or not. If it has, then great. We can move on to the advanced options. In here, you want to go over to boot. And then in boot, you want to disable fast boot. The reason for this is because fast boot is a feature which makes it quick for the boot to start up. But the thing is, the other devices won't start until window has loaded up. You also want to go over to security and then go all the way down to the bottom using the down arrow key and go over to security and disable secure boot. The reason for this is because if there's any other device that is connected, it may stop it and think it's malicious hardware or software. And then once you've done all that, you want to click save and exit. Once you've checked everything, it will boot up as normal. So you just want to let it do its thing. And then once the window comes up, you just pretty much want to fill in the settings, set up the language and the keyboard. Press next and then click on install now. It will start loading things up and doing the installation. Once again, you just want to go over the terms and conditions, agree to it. And then you want to make sure that you click on the second one, the custom install windows only. Once the other window comes up, you just want to select the NVMe, the 500 gigabytes one. This is the main one that you want to install it to. And now it'll just start to install Windows. It will reboot, so that's normal. And then you just pretty much want to set up your other settings. So like language, keyboard. Now the trick for this is to not connect to the internet straight away, because if you do, then you'll have to sign in with a Microsoft account and you can do it that way, but it is easier to go offline. And now that the setup has been done, you just want to right click on the star button and then go to disk management. We are going to allocate the other SSD. So you just pretty much want to right click on it and create a new volume. In here, you just want to go through it and you go ahead and press next. You leave it as normal, it will automatically detect how much amount and then you just want to set it as the D for the label you can give it a name if you want to and once you're happy with everything press next it will now start to format and then it will set up the SSD and another thing that you need to do is if you go into search and then go into your settings, you want to go to update and security. And then in here, you pretty much want to go to activation and activate your windows. If you've got an email, you can easily activate it with that. That is what I did. I just signed into my email and it activated it automatically. The next thing as well is you will need to re-download all your drivers. So if you go to GeForce experience and get yourself the download, install it onto your computer. Set it all up and then check for updates. Make sure it's nice and up to date. And finally, the drivers which we downloaded, you just pretty much want to install all of them onto your system. Some of them are not really essential, so you might have to just look through them and see what you actually need and what you want or you don't need. Some of them are add-ons and extras, for example, like the gaming center. And that is pretty much it.